Hello, and welcome back to J uh, Jacob's Book Corner, where we're talking about my my top 10 best books, or top 8 best books of 2019. I don't have a ninth book. I technically do. We'll count it. It is a novella, um, which I truly think was the best novella that I read this year. So, let's get into it. Right? Because that's what you're here for. You guys care. Um, if there's any reviews or anything like that, any um, vlogs or anything that I talk about these books in, I, of course, link them down below, as you might find them interesting or whatever you might do. So, I'll link them down below, no worries. I have to mention that some of these vlogs might come from a different channel. Do not worry, I have three channels on YouTube. We can move Bros, Jacob is here, and Jacob's Books Corner. So, you know, you can always find me in other places, and that's where these videos will be coming from if they're not here. Okay, starting with book number eight from this list is My Lovely Life by uh, Samantha Downing. My Lovely Life um, is a debut novel by Samantha Downing. This came out in March of this year. And it follows a married couple of 15 years old who are 15, no, 15 years and they start murdering people due to unlikely circumstances, but also because they want to also like it's a mixture of both. Um, the reason why this is so low on my top 10 or to my top eight, I need to change that so I need to annoy me to death. My top eight best books, top nine is what it is. It's simply because of the simple fact that the last, like, one-third is so particularly annoying that the twists and stuff are just not as strong. But overall, the writing here is amazing. I cannot wait for her second sophomore novel. I don't think it's been announced yet, but it's, you best believe I'm reading it. I'm pretty sure this is a debut. Isn't this a debut? I want to say it's a debut. Um, yeah. Yeah, it's a debut. It's such a strong debut, though. It is very, very well planned out, well thought out. I think the twist could have been a little tighter, a little stronger. I think it could be a, less, a little less predictable. But that does not mean I don't recommend this book. I recommend this book so much. So, so much, guys. You guys will love it. You guys will eat it up. It's nasty. And it's gross. But it's also just the perfect amount of amazingness. Just to tell you, there's several people. Heather Graham. I know that's a big author, right? I think that's the only one that I know. But, oh, the Chalkman, CJ Tudor. I read the Chalkman this year. Very good book as well. Didn't make this list, but it was a good book. Anyway, amazing. Highly recommend. Okay, moving on to number seven. I do own this novel. I have a review for it, so I'm not going to really talk about much here. But we're going to talk about On the Come Up by Angie Thomas. Angie Thomas says this is her sophomore novel. She read, uh, she wrote, she wrote, uh, she wrote, um, oh, The Hate You Give, uh, 2017, I want to say it was 2017. Yeah, that makes sense. And so this was her second novel. This follows Brie as she becomes a up-and-coming rapper in Garden Heights. And Brie is by far one of my favorite characters. Not my favorite character anymore. Was for a long time. Um, I read this year. She is an amazing character and her story is remarkable. And it just makes you cry and it makes you so happy. And when I think about the memories of this novel, um, it just makes you really happy. I do have a whole review for it. I'll try to remember to link it down below. Um, it is a slash... Like, non spoiler, spoiler reading blog type of review. So, I hope you guys do enjoy it. But we're going to gloss over it because I do have a review on it. So, the next book we're going to talk about is Pretty Girls by Karen Slaughter. Pretty Girls follows a family um, of three daughters and their dad. And, well, it's a family of five. And their youngest, you know, their oldest daughter gets kidnapped. And, um, yeah. The story starts out with. I can't think of their name. I'm so sorry. I'm very tired. Yeah, Claire. It's Claire. This is... So, Julia gets taken um, two decades prior. Claire's husband gets murdered in the first chapter of this novel. And um, some crazy things a wire. I do have to give some trigger warnings. Um, this is not the only book that I'm going to have to give trigger warnings for. But this is the first book, I would say, on this list that I probably should. This deals with rape. This deals with graphic violence, graphic torture... Um, abuse towards women entirely. This is torture porn at women. Um, these people abuse women for many different reasons. Not good reasons, obviously, but there's just many different reasons. It's extremely satisfying. If you don't cry, what are you? Are you human? I don't know. Karen Slaughter is one of the, the, the one of the best writers I think I've read this year. She is by far my favorite new author I've read. Um, well, I think everybody in this list that I'm going to mention. I have either read before or I love. Every book Angie Thomas is going to put out, I'm going to pick up. Every book that's Samantha Downing, unless they get worse from here, I'm going to pick up. Karen Slaughter, I'm even tempted to read. Now, 
Karen Swanner and I have an interesting relationship. Um, I have two of her books, the two books I read this year, are on this list. The second book will pop up later. Um, with Pretty Girls, it was surprising because I didn't really know if I was going to love it as much. Also, the first, I'd say, 70% of the book isn't super violent. It's very gross, very hard to read, makes you very uncomfortable, and you kind of want it to stop. But it's not as extreme as some people have said. And when it got super duper extreme, I was like, oh, is she crossing some lines? And I thought she crossed some lines with the good daughter, which we'll get to. Um, but this one, like I said, it contains a ton of trigger warnings, and I highly recommend you watch some detailed reviews before you jump into this. But we're going to talk about my number um, number five pick, which is the, I'm going to continue on this book up, is um, Blue Eyes. What's it called? Blue Eyes and something. Oh my gosh, what is that called? Come on, it's going to annoy me. Blonde Hair, Blue Eyes, which saw Julia, the sister who goes missing, um, on the day before she gets kidnapped. That one, um, it does not incur any type of violence or anything like that. It follows her like a normal school day, but it has one of the best monologues, one of the best confrontation scenes I think I've ever read in a book before, and is by far one of my favorite novellas I've ever read, and Julia is such a special character in my heart, to the point where I'm, like, getting the novella, buying it, so my sister can read it, because I think it's going to change your life. Like, maybe that's a little extreme, but she's going to very much enjoy it. And so, if you can't read Pretty Girls, I'd recommend reading novella, um, and if you're going to read back to back, I'd recommend reading Pretty Girls and then the novella, but if you don't think you can handle the content inside this, I do recommend the novella, and then watching spoiler reviews and things like that for Pretty Girls so you can figure out what happens inside the novel. Because it's truly amazing and Karen Slaughter has a way of words. And yeah, um, that's basically all I can tell you about this without giving any spoilers away. As I'm trying to keep these as spoilery as possible or spoilerless as possible. But yeah. So moving on to the next book I have, which is the only Riley Sagar on here. I read all three of his novels and I can't actually say that he's... He's definitely an author that had to grow, basically. Um, his ranking for me goes his newest one, which we're about to talk about, Lock Every Door, to The um, um, the Last Time I Lied, to The Final the final Girls, which is one of my most disappointed books of the year. So I read Lock Every Door um, in October. Yes, it was in October. And this follows, I have to have her name, sorry, hold on, Jules. No one can think of any other names, I guess. Jules, and she is down on her luck. Her, her and her boyfriend just broke up. She basically has no place to stay. She has no money. And she has been a fascination over the Bartholomew, which is a old building in New York. And she gets a she sees an ad in the paper saying she can get paid up to $6,000, I think it is, to live there for four months every month. She gets paid $6,000. Maybe it's $3,000. Something like that. She gets paid to live in the place she wants to live. But the Bartholomew... The, the hotel, um, the apartment building, has some very strict rules, such as she's not allowed to have anybody inside or anything like that. This book is very intense. It's very spooky. has a very um, a very uh, spooky vibe to it. Um, it's very well written. The characters are very strong. Claire, I mean not Claire, Jules here has its potential to be one of my favorite characters I've read this year. I'm not really sure who is my favorite character over this year. I have a lot of them, but um, Jules has a very strong contender. Because she is just a very remarkable main character. Um, she makes one stupid mistake, but I think it's a trope that this author particularly enjoys. As it's a trope in every single one of his novels. There's not one novel. Um, actually, I think... Um, oh, um, what is that called? The last time I lied, I think, flips that trope on its head. But it comes back to it. And it's the only annoying aspect, I think, of this novel. And I think it makes the ending kind of obvious. But... Either way, I highly, highly, highly recommend this. The audiobook is also very strong, by the way. If you don't like reading thrillers, I recommend listening to them. They make it go by faster, and also, um, it's worth getting to the end. I didn't particularly enjoy the ending of Lock Every Door, though, but I enjoyed every other aspect of this book. I'm very excited for his fourth novel that comes out in July of next year. I have no idea what that's about. I think I do. I think it's a ghost mystery or something like that. But either way, this was so strong that I'm like, oh, <laughs> see up the first two. Read the third one, and then probably pick up the fourth one. So moving on to book number four. Is it book number four? 
Maybe it's book number three. That's five. That's four. Three. Two. Okay, this whole numbering system's off. It's fine. We're just going to talk about the next one, which is The Good Daughter by Karen Slaughter. Now, I do have to say I've never read the novella for this. I'm actually going to pick it up next year as um, I'm curious to see what it follows. I'm pretty sure it follows um, their dad during the court case that's so prominent in this novel. I love this book so much I went out and bought it. Yeah. Now, I only bought it for like eight bucks, but I still went out and I still purchased it. Um, so this follows... Charlotte, Sam uh, let's see here. This is all Charlotte and Samantha Quinn, and also Rusty Quinn, which is their their dad. Um, and it also follows somewhat of their mom, who's called like Mimi or something throughout the book. And it's a family drama that's also very much a thriller. Um, the thrilling parts happen very briefly throughout. I'd say it's more heavy in the me medical place, such as law firms as well. Um, but there's something, something amazing about the story. One, um, Charlie, which is Charlotte, is, I know I keep saying this, and I mean it truly, but I've never truly related to a character like I related to Charlie. Um, we went through some more, some more things that happened in our lives, which is interesting, um, to different degrees, but they were still almost as bad. Not nearly as bad. Charlie had it way worse than I did. But um, it was interesting. And I'm very curious. I would love to talk to someone about it. You know. To like a character study. And I might do a video about character studies. But Charlie's a very interesting character. Um, Samantha herself is a very interesting character. I do want to mention though. Just like with the last one. This one has a future warnings as well. Graphic violence. Rape. Or sexual assault. Period. There's a few different incidents. And also. Um miscarriages and things as i know some of that stuff can be really true and miscarriage in, in particular um this is another one of those books that the first i don't know 100 pages let's see here how far oh um, i guess less than 100 pages how long is that opening is that oh gamma a jama on i'm trying to see how long for, okay. So it's like the first like 40 maybe pages. Yeah, the first 40 pages of the book deals with the graphic murders of the family of the Quins. And then it deals with, then it jumps ahead. And then it also deals with a school shooting. So if that's triggering to you. Um, it's a very, very important, very, like, it's, it's described in very graphic detail. Um, the murders themselves are very graphic as well, but they're told through sections of the book, and so that's what I mean. That's what I mean. Um, Pretty Girls is pretty violent throughout the whole novel, whereas this one, it hits you in moments, which I think makes it even worse. Oh, The Kept Woman, which is a, by the way, not a standalone. Uh, Pieces of Her was a standalone she wrote, and things like that. But by so far, I think this is the best Karen Slaughter that I've read. Pretty Girls was a very strong book. There's something about this that I think was even stronger. Um, and there's, I don't really know how to describe it. I think you should just read it. But once again, Karen Slaughter seems to be an author that you really need to look up the trailer warnings and things for. As there's a particular instance towards the third half of this book. Towards the three-fourths part of the novel. That's very graphically described. Very violent and it makes me uncomfortable thinking about it. And so if you had someone who had experienced it or who has an idea or something like that, I think it could truly harm you mentally. And I do think you should look it up. Same thing with the other one. Pretty Girls, you should definitely look up. These are, Karen Slaughter is one of those authors. But both novels deal with detectives. This one, I think, handles things a little bit worse, but also kind of more medium. Um, but she writes a detective series, and I kind of want to read it just to see how well she does with the detectives instead. Is that how she portrays detectives? Do detectives not like how they betray her? Is that really how they are done? These are questions I have. I don't think I'll ever get answers to. But um, either way, I do recommend Karen Slaughter a lot. She's becoming one of my new top favorite authors. And I can't wait to read her other two standalones as well. I wrote her two best standalones, I'm pretty sure. And I'm kind of reading them out of order. Um, just like with Riley Sagar, I'm going to be doing a Karen Slaughter wrap-up for standalones. Riley Sagar, I'm doing a... 
a ranking video right before the fourth book comes out. Or sooner, or whatever. I don't know. We'll have to wait and see. So the next two books, or next three books, will be popping up over on the tree. Or the unicorn. Either or. Um, and the third, the next one I'm talking about is No Exit. This, I'm sorry, I'm really tired. Um, is written by... Let me go find it. I read it. Oh, no, I did. Wait. Oh, there it is. By Taylor Adams. Taylor Adams, this is not his debut novel. I thought it was. I kept saying it in the video, in the vlog that I recorded while I read this, but it's not. Um, Taylor Adams has written several other books. They're on my TBR. I'll be getting to them next year. This is my first ever Taylor Adams that I read, though. And this follows a girl. Ironically, I'm pretty sure named Charlie. I'm not even lying. I wish I was. Maybe it's Kirby. Darby. Darby. Um, and she is driving from the college that she's going to back home in Utah across the mountains. And she ends up having to stop at a rest stop where she sees um, where she sees a, a, a child in the van in a dog cage. And uh, a kidnapped child, basically. There's only like seven or eight people here. And it follows... Um, this would be an excellent movie, by the way. I'm very excited for the movie that's coming out because it's set up perfectly for an excellent, like, movie. Uh, this is a very high action-packed thriller that truly changed my life. I mean, I don't think I've read anything like this before. And even, I've talked about a lot of thrillers. There's no more thrillers on this list, by the way. I'm done with them. But it's so different from everything I just told you about. Karen Slaughter is much more family-based. Riley Sagar was much more like a horror film or like a like a scary film. This this had something different in it. Now, the kidnapping stuff is quite vile. The characters themselves are quite vile, but Derby really does hold her own, and it truly is a shocking book. Um, I believed all the twists, even though some of them are quite far fetched. Um, but yeah, it was it's hard to read. I don't know if Jacob's Books Corner actually has, I don't know if I have the reading vlog that contains no exit. I think I do. It's, so I'll totally recommend it down, I'll totally link it down below. I just don't know if it was me or if I um, have it on a, if I have it on a different, or if it's on my other channel. I think it's on this one. I could be wrong though, and I don't, you know, I don't like telling you guys wrong things. So I'm just very quickly looking. No, nope, it's right here. Oh, no, Spooky Books recommendation. Um, spookiest vlog ever. Maybe. Oh, no. So, I'm reading my favorite book. That's what it was. Um, I don't know if I have a vlog detailing my love for my other book, though. Which is interesting. Either way. Doesn't matter. We'll get there. Um, but yeah, that's No Exit. I highly recommend this. You need to go in quite blind. So that's why I'm not talking anything else about. It is kind of violent. I do want to mention that um, in case violence is not for you. It's just something to know. So the next book we're going to talk about is something everybody's playing as their number one. It's not my number one. Haha. <laughs> but a lot of people have it as their number one of the year. And it's been the number one of the year since it came out in like March. Was it March? It was like March, right? I know I keep checking things. I'm so sorry. And that is Daisy Jones in the sixth by Taylor Jenkins Reid. Okay, Taylor Jenkins Reid is also something else I figured out last year because I really read The Seven Husbands of, um, the seven, yeah, March, I was right. The Seven Husbands of Edwin Hart, no, Edwin Hugo, and I read it last December. I really liked it. I recommend that one as well. I highly recommend Daisy Jones and the Six, um, and yeah, this is, follows a band called Daisy Jones and the Six, well, it starts out with The Six and it goes into Daily Jones. And it's a fictional band um, set in the 1970s and it follows them through a documentation style where you read news, re where you read um, like dialogues of reports and things that happened in that time of the, the peak of the band all the way to the fall. Um, and it jumps back and forth between times and things. It's a beautifully well-written novel. And it's amazing, and I highly could not highly enough recommend the audiobook for this book. Okay, that's a lot of books. I, the audiobook is amazing. It's a full cast audiobook. You've never heard one before. And it's amazing, and it truly is one of the best books of the year. And it deserves all the praise it's ever gotten. 
and um, yeah, I'm really excited to listen to it again. I've started it, but I have so many other audiobooks I need to get to this month that I will be a next month read. So the last book we're going to talk about is Red, White, and Royal Blue by Casey McCartan. Is that right? McCarran? Something under those lines, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, McQuiston is what it is. This is also, by the way, fun fact, a debut novel of this year. I picked this up on a whim. I was looking for um, some naughty romances, and I read some pretty bad ones, and so I wanted to read somewhat of a good one. And this is by far one of my favorite books I've read this year. I read it twice this year, back to back. I literally finished the audiobook, paid back up the audiobook. I am picking up the audiobook again um, as soon as I get a chance. It's, it's going to be a book I'm going to be reading for a long time to the point where I'm going to have to buy the audiobook because I love it so much and it deserves to be purchased and owned by Jacob. Um, it's so good. I highly, highly recommend this. This follows the son of the President of the United States and the Prince of Wales. And their epic romance over the course of, I think it's like six years or something like that, if I'm not mistaken. Is that right? Um, and I have to mention, by the way, I don't have my favorite character. I do. I mean, honestly, I think my favorite character is the son of Alex, um, which is the son of the president. But Henry, it's here now. See, I don't know. I feel like they're both like my crush of the year. Like, oh, who do I be my boyfriend? Henry. I want my, I want Henry to be my boyfriend. He fits my vibe. Yeah, Henry. The audiobook also, like I said here, is extremely strong. The voices, the voice acting, oh, you can't get better than this. You know, Daisy Jones and Six had every cast member had their own voice, so it's really nice, and it's kind of read like a podcast, which is amazing. This one has one voice, and he does every voice amazingly, like top-notch. It's beautiful. So, yep, guys, that's my top 10 list, or top 9 list of 2019. This video is super-duper long. But guys, if you enjoyed it, please give me a big fat thumbs up. Don't forget to comment down below. Hit the subscribe button. And I'll see you all next time for another beautiful video. And thank you for watching.